magnificent. Thank you, Harry. They're still applauding. One more. Oh. Huh? Let me out this time, all right? Mr. Orlack, the press will wait. Bye-bye. Good work, Mr. How do you like Mr. Orlack? I'm sorry. I have to be in Paris in exactly two hours from now. There's a plane waiting for me at the airport. A professional engagement, Mr. Orlack? No, this time it's a private one, if you don't mind. Excuse me. Thank you. He'll be over France by now. Quick, Emily. We have plenty of time. Mademoiselle must look her best tonight. Emily? I'm scared. Scared? I can't live up to him. All those females around him. Nonsense. Mademoiselle must look at Mademoiselle. So beautiful. Tonight, Monsieur Orlac will ask Mademoiselle to become Madame. I feel it. Bless you, Emily. Sir, we're out of luck. What do you mean? We're running slap into it. The Borgia said it's coming in over the whole Paris area. We'll have to push on to Lyon. That's impossible. I must land at Le Bourget. It's too dicey, sir. By the time we get there, visibility will be down to zero. Look, I'm paying for this. It's absolutely vital I reach Le Bourget by midnight. It is forbidden. The boulevard ago is for the present closed. But why? An execution at the Santé prison. Vasseur, the Spangler. But it's Stephen Orlack. His hands are burned to the bone. Unless they're operated on at once, he may never play again. You must let us through. That monster Vasseur is going to die. His hands will never strangle again. But the hands of Orlack can still be saved. You are right, madame. Drive on. Professor Vulture. Yes, yes, I know. They telephoned me from Le Bourget. The patient, Stephen Orlack, pianist. Yes, the pianist. They wanted to take him to the hospital. But I insisted that he be brought here. He says, I know who he is. Who are you, his wife? No, not yet. But... Uh, sit down if you want to. Do you mind if I have some coffee? I can't work on an empty stomach. What's your name? Louise Cochran. Louise? You're the niece of Dr. Cochrane? Yes. You know him. <laughs> know him, yes. A good man, a good psychiatrist. Still practicing in London? He says you're the greatest surgeon in the world. That's why I brought Stephen to you. Oh, I'll do what I can. The patient is ready, Professor. Yes. 
The other one ready? Yes, Professor. In the sterilizing room. to be late, darling. Have you been practicing? No. Oh? I thought... I was going to, but somehow I couldn't. These hands don't feel as if they belong to me. It's only six months, you know. Professor Volchev said it would take time. Yes, I know. Darling, what's the matter? Nothing. Can't I help? It's nothing, I tell you, nothing. Stephen. Six months ago, we were going to be married. Then this awful thing happened. Perhaps it has changed you. You think so? I don't know. I haven't changed. But if you have, you've only got to say so. You're free as the wind. One thing hasn't changed. My love for you. It never will. We'll be married soon. Very soon. Oh. I'm going to be blue for a month. Did I hurt you? Darling, what is it? Stephen. I seem to have a headache. I think I'll go home if you don't mind. Yes, of course, if you want to. The car's outside. I'll run you back, shall I? No, thanks. I'd rather walk. All right, then. Goodbye, darling. Thank <laughs> you. 
my machine. Go on, give him his prize. Here you are, monsieur, a lovely doll to take back to your girlfriend. <laughs> Is that Professor Voltaire's clinic? Could I speak to the professor, please? The professor is not here. He is at a medical conference in Moscow. When will he be back? Not for several weeks. Who is speaking? This is Stephen Orlack. Oh, but of course, Monsieur Orlack. I am so sorry he is not here, but he's so much in demand, you know. And you, are you pleased with your new hand? You ought to be. The professor is a real magician. And your case is one of his greatest triumphs. Yes, my darling, that's what I'm here for. Help me, help me. I'm going to take you away. Uncle Franz is my guardian. He says we can have his villa for just as long as we want it. You'll come, won't you? Yes, I'll come. Lots of sun, plenty to eat, nothing to do. That's what you need. And me, of course. Especially you. <laughs>
seem to like me. Funny. He's friendly enough with strangers, as a rule. Oh, well. Dinner will be ready in half an hour. when I called, so I went to look for him. He was already cold when Ange found him there under Mr. Orland's window. It must have happened in the night. But what can have done it? Do you think it was a dog? No, mademoiselle. A dog has no hands. He cannot strangle. But who did it, Ange? Who? I cannot say, mademoiselle. There were some gypsies hanging around last night, trying to steal things. Perhaps it was one of them. Yes, of course. Must have been. I'll go and ring the police. No, mademoiselle. Do not call the police. Perhaps it was not the gypsy. No. Take care. The sun is like the mistral. It can be dangerous. What are you getting at? I, monsieur? Yes, you, monsieur. What are you hitting at? You think I killed that cat, don't you? I've seen the way you looked at me. With your sly, insinuating little remarks. Well, if that's what you think, why don't you say so? Why don't you say it? Go on. Say it. Monsieur, please. What are you afraid of? You think I'm going to kill you, too? Huh? Shaken, that's all. He'll soon get over. I don't know what came over me. You know, if you hadn't come along when you did, I think I might have killed him. No, you wouldn't, darling. Probably this wretched mistral. It's true, you know. It does get on one's nerves sometimes. Even so. Oh, Stephen, please. It's over. Let's forget it ever happened. Come and stand 
stand over here, where I can see. mustn't stay here. Not another moment. You're not safe with me. No, please let me go. Please let me go! Would you like to see it? I'll take it. Mm -hmm. 
Would you mind filling in your form? And what about your luggage? I haven't any. Well, in that case, I must ask you for money. Thank you. This way, please. Don't worry, Mrs. Stephen. I'm going to get it myself. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, Mr. Nero. Hello, my dear. We have a new neighbor. Number three. So what? A very interesting neighbor. At least he interests me. And I'm hoping to persuade you to take an interest in him. What? Again? Yes, my dear. Again. Where is he? I don't know. He calls himself Mrs. Stephen, but that's not his name. I've seen him somewhere before. Maybe in jail? I don't think so. What's he look like? Handsome, distinguished man of the world. Plenty of money. Just your type. Very funny. If he's all that, what's he doing in a dump like this? Ah, how very perceptive you are, my dear. That's the whole point. What is he doing here? If a man like that isn't at the Grand Hotel, it's because he's got something to hide. And if he's got something to hide, he'll pay through the nose till his eyes drop out. You're a vicious brute, Neo. You hate people. You made me a slut. Made? My dear, I couldn't stop you. You were born a slut and you'll always be one. It is I who've lowered myself. Swine. Now may I continue? What do you want me to do? You're supposed to be an artist, my dear. Well, tonight you will play a little comedy for him. Suppose I see I won't. Oh, then I shall have to be a little more persuasive. This room was empty. It was. I woke you up, didn't I? Oh, it doesn't matter. Well, I had better be going. <gasps> Just look at me. Oh, will you fix it for me, please? That's why Neil nearly busted my arm. Oh, what happened? Who's Nero? Great Nero, king of magic, and his partner, Milan. Queen of Dance. I don't suppose you have heard of us. I'm afraid not. Here. Use this. Thank you. He's a devil, that Neil. He ought to be behind bars, if you ask me. Why don't you leave him? <laughs> you don't know what it's like to be afraid of someone. Yes, I think I do. You? Who have you got to be frightened of? You need money. Oh, no, thanks. You can give me a drink, if you like. Help yourself. Do you think I am a victim? You're nice looking too. And kind and generous. Wanting to give me that money. Why didn't you take it? Well, I don't know you very well. Do I? I'd like to. I'd like to know you a whole lot better. Tell me something. Yes. What is it you're afraid of? Oh, all 
right. Don't tell me if you don't want to. I was only trying to be friendly. We are going to be friends, aren't we? Yes, why not? Oh, that's better. I must go. Will you come and see me dance? We are at the Blue Monday. Maybe. When? I don't know, sometimes. I shall be looking into it. Well, well, on with the show. How did it go, your meeting with Mrs. Stephen? All right. You're not very communicative, my dear. Talk. I did like you told me. And? He fell for it. And you? He'll be around all right. He did not say when, but he will come. My clever little Leela. What did you find out? He's scared about something. You would not say what, though. And you were right about another thing. He's loaded. You should have seen his wallet. I shall, my dear. I shall. No. You're not going to hurt him, are you? That will depend on him, my dear. Why do you ask? I don't know. He's not such a bad chap. He wanted to give me some money. Not touching. The service is rendered, no doubt. No. To help me get away from you. Oh, you can laugh. I was a fool not to take it. Maybe next time I will. Oh, no, my dear. No, you won't. She'll never get away from us, will she, Pluto? <laughs>
Ici, tous ces bras, tous ces dents sont en usine, mais ma. Oh là là, et pour poser tranquillement, je ferai un petit coup à deux dans le bois. Il m'avait mis dans un taxi, et au bord de la nuit, si j'avais eu vraiment peur de lui. Si, 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 tant pis pour moi et pour lui, je crois bien que j'aurais dit oui. Lui m'a offert une tasse de thé, et puis des gros biscuits à la cuillère chez sa mère, et au bout d'un petit moment, j'ai eu vraiment mon petit chou de pain. Non, il m'a dit bien lancé dans une cave à Saint-Germain des Prés. Et c'est que, tant pis pour moi et pour lui, je crois bien que j'aurais dit oui. C'est parti
nice of you to come. Did you like the show? Very much, what I saw of it. From these clothes, you must have seen plenty. I liked what I saw very much indeed. I must say, you don't look as if you have been enjoying yourself. Couldn't we go somewhere else? I'd like to, of course. Good, I'll get the bill. But I can't go yet, not before 12. I've got to stay and entertain the customer. It's in my contract. Well, perhaps if I spoke to the manager. Oh, no, don't do that. Why? If Nero got to be a rich, he would skin me alive. Why don't you go on back to the hotel? Soon as I get away, I shall sleep in for a while and have a little drink with you. How would that be? Fine. Don't be too long. You're still brooding about that terrible accident. What about the accident? What happened afterwards? Afterwards? Only a few hours later, at dawn, a man went to the city. Yes, I know. Louis Vasseur. Louise, why did you take me to Volchev? Why? He seemed the obvious man to go to. I mean, his reputation. He's a genius, everybody said. He's done the most amazing things. Grafting tissue, bones, even limbs. And hands? No. No, you don't think that. It's not possible. It's just your imagination. Darling, it's an obsession. Just look at these hands. They're not mine. They belong to someone else. They have their own thoughts, their own will. I can't control them. You'd better go, Louise. No, Stephen, no. Darling, I'm not frightened of you. Go! I tell you, go! Very well, then. I'll go with you. Better for you to be alone for a while. Work this out of your mind. But when you need me, and you will need me, you'll know where to find me. Find him, mademoiselle? Yes, I found him. And where was he? In hell, aunt. In hell.
forgotten about you. What happened to you? You changed. Have I? For the better, I hope. I'm just leaving me, Lump. I thought you liked me. I do. Oh, stay with me. Good evening. What should I say? Good morning. I trust I'm not premature. It's new. El Kimi. El Kilas Bon. Now calm yourself, my dear. Calm yourself. Monsieur and I have one or two little things to discuss together, so off you go. Good now, Mr. Oldman. So you know my name? Yes. I know everything about you. Tragic accident. How I wept when it was rumored that you might never play again. Thank you, but why don't you come to the point? Fortunately, you were in very good hands. Professor Bolchev, remarkable surgeon. I had a friend once who was also a patient of his. Poor Louis. Poor Vassar. Vassar? Miss Yarnak, would you do me a very great favor? What? In memory of my poor friend, Louis Vassar, would you permit me to shake his hand? Excuse me, Mr. Olek. This has just been delivered by special messenger. I thought it might be important. I shouldn't think so. Just put it down, will you, John? Yes, sir. Will you be requiring me any further now, sir? Oh, thank you. Hold on.
ill. Let me get a doctor. Give him time to get you. I can't understand it. He seemed fine when I left him. A little nervous, perhaps, but no more than usual. He's highly strung. Yes, I suppose so. Most artists are. Not all. Have you ever seen him in this condition before? Uncle Francis, please. I'd prefer not to talk about it. What don't you want to talk about? My little exhibition tonight? I can't say I blame you. Steve! We've been so worried. There was no need. I'm quite all right. That was just a display of artistic temperament. You can call my performance artistic. It was certainly unorthodox. Darling, what happened? It wasn't like you. Stephen, I'm no musician, but I should say that your performance this evening was that of a man undergoing severe nervous strain. Why don't you let me get one of my colleagues to give you a check over? Yes, why don't you? Thank you. I can prescribe for myself. What about you, Doctor? One for the road? Thank you, no. I think I'll have an early night. And I'd advise you both to do the same. Good night, Stephen. Good night. Poor Uncle Francis. You weren't very nice to me. I wasn't very nice to you. It doesn't matter about me. I'm your wife. I love you. Yes? Number? Yes. Wrong number. Come back to sleep. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. I, do. I always know what I'm doing. That's the reason why we came to London. Perhaps you must be patient, my dear, just a little more patient. Before I'm through with him, he'll be on his knees begging to give us every sort he must got. Unless he kills himself first. Yes, that might be a little difficult if he died before I could get my hands on his money. Isn't it, Mephisto? Think what you like. But I've done too much already. If you go on, you go on alone. Without me. My dear little Leland, I picked you out of the gutter. You want me to throw you back? I don't need you. I could earn a living all right. Yes, yes, of course you could. With a scar on your face. Hmm? Sweetheart. Felix here. Nero and Lee Lang on stage for rehearsal. Coming, Monsieur Felix. I'm afraid he's out at the moment. 
Can I give him a message? You are Madame Morlac? Yes. I must speak with you. Please. It is very important. Very well. Come in, please. As you see, madame, I am a widow. My poor husband died in the most tragic circumstances. I am sorry. Can I get you something? Perhaps a glass of water? Yes, of course. I have come to bring you a message from the other world. A message? Madame, my husband cannot rest. He told me, find Monsieur Stephen Norlac. Implore him to give back that which belongs to me. My husband's got something which belongs to him. Have you any idea what it can be? Oh, I don't know, Madame. You will ask Monsieur Norlac. I'll ask him. But... Oh, thank you. Tell me your name. It is an unhappy one, madame. But perhaps it will be familiar to you. My husband was Louis Vasseur. I don't believe in doctors. Hello, Maurice. Oh, hello, Grant. Am I interrupting you? Don't be angry. I want to meet your guest. This is Mr. Orlack, isn't it? Don't you two know each other, Stephen Orlack? Graham Kurt, sculptor. How do you do, Mr. Kurt? How do you do, Mr. Orlack? I saw it to miss your recital last night. Have I said the wrong thing? What? Oh, oh, oh no, no, my dear chap, not at all. I've been in Brussels. Flew back this morning. And you're fortunate. You missed a fiasco. I can hardly believe that. I'm going to ask you a big favor, Mr. Orlack. I want you to let me use your hand. My hands. I'm not asking you to sit for me. I know you'd be much too busy for that, but if you could spare me a couple of hours, I'd like to photograph them and take some wax impressions. I'm sorry. Now, don't say no until you've heard me out. This is a major work. It's the most ambitious thing I've ever tackled. It's going to stand in Duncester Cathedral, the raising of Lazarus from the dead, above the high altar. Now, this is how I see it. On the left, Jesus, his arm outstretched. Lazarus, come forth. Behind him, Thomas, doubting Thomas, Martha, Mary, the disciples. Over to the right, the tomb, a gaping void, the stone rolled away. All we see of Lazarus is his hands. His hands. Your hands, Orlac, projecting from the tomb. The mouldering grave clothes trailing behind them. What do you think of that? No! 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 I don't know what to believe. A woman called today. I'm frightened to tell Stephen what she said. She said she was Madame Vasseur. Madame Vasseur? Oh, Uncle, it couldn't be true. Stephen couldn't have the hands of Vasseur. I should say that at the present time it would be utterly impossible. But surgeons have done some remarkable things. Uncle Francis. If Professor Volchev told you that he had grafted the hands of Louis Vasseur onto Stephen's wrists, would you believe him? I suppose I should have to. I have to be sure. Hello, Stephen. Hello. Forgive my intrusion. Hello. Where's Louise? She left a message for you. That's why I'm here. Cigarette? No, thank you. 
How do you like the case? Gift from a grateful patient. Rather a touching inscription. Very nice. What's this about Louise? Nothing much. Migraine, a little out of sorts, that's all. However, uh, purely as a precautionary measure, I've sent her into the Maribyrn Clinic for a complete checkup. You're keeping something from me. My dear Stephen, it's a simple routine procedure. There's absolutely nothing to be alarmed about. You're sure? She may be back tomorrow with a clean bill of health. Thank God for that. Go a little gently with her, that's all. What makes you think I don't go gently with her? Nothing. Nothing at all. You know, a lot of Americans have a checkup every six months. You know, if you ever thought of it, I could always arrange for you to have one. Why me? Why not? I thought British doctors weren't allowed to drum up trade. That's rather an offensive remark, Steve. It was an offensive suggestion. Perhaps well, I'd better be going. As you wish. that I am. I've left my cigarette case on that table. Leave a message for Mrs. Orlack, please. Orlack. O R L A C. She's not there? Are you quite sure? Excuse me. You 
come at a bad moment, madame. Professor Walsher has suffered this cerebral hemorrhage. These gentlemen are about to perform an emergency operation. Forgive me. I hope it will be successful. Are they clear, Prince? Yes, they're very good. Are they identifiable? Oh, yes. What are your relations with the French Sûreté? Oh, usual entente, not so cordial. <laughs> Why? Could you check those prints against the records of a man called Vasseur, Louis Vasseur? Vasseur? Oh, yes, I remember. A strangler. Oh, but he's dead. He was guillotined almost a year ago. I want those prints checked against his. You need a spiritualist, not Scotland Yard. I know it sounds odd, but can you do it? Yes, very simple. Would you like to tell me why? Not just at present. Darling, I'm back. Miss me? Where have you been? Didn't Uncle Francis tell you? Oh, yes, he told me. The most affecting little tale. I was quite worried about you. Darling, what's wrong? I've spent the time looking at this. Horrible. Who did it? Don't you know? I can't imagine. Surely you don't think I did. Didn't you? No. No, of course not. Darling, you must believe me. Why should I believe you? Stephen, don't turn against me. You need me. It wasn't you, then it must have been Nero. Nero? Yes. The man I met in Marseille. Now he's here in London. Are you from the press? Yes, that's right. Mr. Felix just went up on the stage. I'll call him. Uh, no, don't trouble. I'm in no hurry. I'll watch the show. Please yourself. The girl's not bad.
I want a word with you. Uh, you can cut along, my dear. Oh, Charlie. But, Miss. Good afternoon, Madame Vasseur. You? You are mistaken, Madame. My name is not Vasseur. No, I didn't think it was. Go away. You have no right to come in here. I destroyed it. I'm only returning your call. I tell you, I have never seen you before. You are taking me for somebody else. I don't think so. What about this? I told him it would not work. I won't hear. Look, all I'm saying is we want to see a bit less of your conjuring tricks and a bit more of your fair lady. See what I mean? Yes. Yes, I see what you mean. Well, do something about it before tonight, okay? Expensive perfume you're using, my dear. Like it? I can smell it all the way down the passage. What did Felix want? Felix? Felix informed me with his usual tact that his patrons are less interested in my brains than in your delicious body. What did you say? My dear, what could I say? An artist has a duty to his public. If they want your body, then they must have it. You mean we've got to change the act before well, tonight? It's only a minor alteration. But the effect will be sensational. Well, don't you better let me in on it? No, no, my dear. I want to surprise you too. Order 5780. I'm giving you my number, Monsieur Orlac, before you hang up, in case you should want to talk to your friend, Nero. And I'm sure you will want to talk to him. I know who it is. What have you to say to me? I told you Madame Orlac and her guardian were planning to put you away. Well, it's going to happen tonight. Unless you act first, you will wake up tomorrow. Very unpleasant surroundings. A bientôt, dear Monsieur Orlac. These fingerprints are Stephen Orlac's, aren't they? Why do you say that? Mrs. Orlac is a relation of yours, isn't she? She was here a few minutes ago. Here? Yeah. Inspector Jack, I saw her. I tell Dr. Cochran. Well, the lady was in a very excitable condition, sir. She said that there was some fellow called Nero who was persecuting her husband. Do you know anything about this, Doctor? No. Go on, Jagger. Well, it was something about her husband's hand, she said. She wanted me to have this man arrested. It wasn't until I'd had a word with the super here. But it began to make sense. If you can call blackmail making sense. Anyway, having this man Nero picked up and brought into questioning. Where? Tonight. These fingerprints are Stephen Orlax, aren't they? His mind's tottering on a razor's edge. Anything might happen. I thought that if his fingerprints were compared with Vasseur's and proved to be different, 
It should relieve him of his morbid fixation. This is the reply from France. As you see, they won't let us have Vassar's Prince. But this is of the utmost importance. We must let Louise know at once. Hello? Uncle Francis, I've been trying to get you. Scotland Yard? But I just came from there. Yes, I told them, but I don't think they believe me. Uncle Francis, he must be stopped. He's out of his mind. What's they're going to? Tonight? Oh, thank God. What a relief. So Nero was right. Louise? Louise, what's happened? No! Louise! Louise! Tell me to get my car on. Hurry.
Maestro. Softé in Paris. The case of Louis Vassel has been officially reopened. It's a nasty business, but there seems to be no doubt that he was innocent. Yes, they've got the real murderer. He's confessed. Louis Vassel was innocent. My hands are innocent. Tant pis pour moi et pour lui, je sais bien que je dirais oui. C'est parti 